Uh, now, last year, let's talk about cloud services. Last year, cloud services made a significant chunk of the nearly $10.9 billion in revenue reported by Microsoft as part of its commercial revenues for that particular segment line. How much of that was made in Africa, however, we don't know. The firm just doesn't break down its revenue lines by region. What is clear, though, is that the red one based company is keen on expanding cloud services in sub-Saharan Africa. Earlier on, I spoke to Richard Sauer, the Deputy General Counsel of the company. I asked him how the firm can expand cloud adoption in a continent where many a country don't either have laws on data protection or are in the process of making them. We think government should lead by example. We think that they should embrace the cloud and they should take advantage of the opportunities. The opportunities for governments to connect with their citizens in a much more direct and impactful way using cloud technology is a great place for governments to start. And then to the crux of your question, mm -hmm. it's about that balanced regulatory environment. Yeah. And the toughest issue is sort of the one you hit. It's, the, it's really the balance between sort of public safety on one hand and personal privacy on the other. And there's a, there's a bit of a tension there, um, and it's in different parts of the world, so it's, it's ratcheted in different ways, but that is a great place for governments to focus and modernize those laws, because we struggle where, with that everywhere. Where, where do you find the most tension? Because from the regulators, at least I'm using the Kenya context here as an example, regulators tend to believe that as far as we're concerned, as long as that service is on offer, in this market, within my geographical borders, doesn't matter if the data is parked in a server in Iceland or South right. Africa or whatever, it still falls under my jurisdiction. How do you balance those two? Yeah, the jurisdictional laws are the toughest uh, part of this, I think, the equation. We are now, here's gonna give you an example of a, uh, of a similar case, I think it has some applicability here. We are fighting a case now in the United States involving data that sits in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's a little different. In this case, a U.S. federal prosecutor has demanded that we go to Ireland, get data from our Irish data center, and bring it back to the United States for use in a, in a case that this person's prosecuting. When we looked at the facts, we said, hey, that data is sitting in Ireland. That's actually a European citizen. Mm -hmm. So what we said to the United States government is like, don't come to us and ask us for that data. Don't sort of use, essentially, brute force to has, have us pull that back from Ireland. Mm -hmm. Use this, there's a treaty that exists between the United States and Ireland. It's called a Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty. It's, very, mm -hmm. it's for this very purpose, for data, for, for law enforcement on either side of the Atlantic Ocean to share data that they need in, in, in law enforcement cases. Use that but they'd rather not because that's slow, it's cumbersome, they'd rather ask us to do this directly. So we're fighting that case. We've, we've filed a lawsuit against the United States in a magistrate court in New York. We've, uh, we, we didn't prevail at the, at the first level, we took it to the second level, we didn't prevail. We're now in front of the Second Circuit Court of Appeals where we've, in front of a three-judge panel, we've argued the case and we're waiting for the decision mm -hmm. to come down. But that will set a very important precedent in our view about essentially Laws matter, borders matter. The laws of Ireland matter, and the people of Ireland should be protected by Irish law. Mm -hmm. And so that's the principle we're trying to stand up for. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of it will be that if I have my data parked in an Irish server, I mean, that gives me a bit of a loophole to exploit if I want to put some information beyond the reach of a government that I do not necessarily trust 100%, doesn't it? I think what ultimately is needed here is essentially there needs to be a dialogue. I mean, you know, there needs to be a broad conversation where people come together to sort out these sorts of issues because these will get in the way. These issues will become an impediment to the cloud and to the opportunities that the cloud will unleash.